This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the last of three lectures on Chapter 9 of the paper F5 lecture notes. In the previous lectures, we've done shutdown decisions, we've done relevant costing. The last one is something called Make or Buy. And uh, as always, we'll have a look through a question and go through it. Uh, but in fact, the technique involved here is a technique we covered in one of the earlier chapters. Uh, we went through key factor analysis and throughput accounting. And if you've not gone through it, then do. You should be doing these in order. Well, although this has nothing at all to do with throughput accounting, um, it's the same basic technique. You, as we used in key factor analysis, but in a slightly different way, or limiting factor analysis. Anyway, let me explain exactly what I mean. Uh, can you look at the last example in the chapter? Example three. It says the availability of material B is limited to 8,000 kilos. So we do have a limited resource. Uh, we make three products, X, Y, and Z, and the demand 2,000 uh, units of X, uh, the demand for Y is 2,500, the Z is 4,000. And we're told below the variable cost per unit to make them ourselves, 10, 12, 14. Alternatively, instead of making them ourselves and then selling them, we could buy them from another supplier already made. But, understandably, they cost more. Uh, X had cost us 13 a unit, uh, Y 17, and Z 16. Now, of course, why on earth would we buy them in from a, uh, another supplier when we could make them ourselves at a lower price? Well, it's because of this limit on materials. You see the demand, 2,000, 2,500, and 4. If we were going to make ourselves, then below it gives us how many kilos that the material require. So X, 2,000 units at 3 kilos each would need 6,000 kilos. Y, 2,500 units at 2 kilos each would need another 5,000 kilos. Uh, and Z, uh, 4,000 units at 1 kilo each, 4,000. To be able to produce to meet demand ourselves, we need a total of 15,000 kilos. Uh, and we've only got 8,000. And so we can't produce all ourselves. Uh, we're going to have to buy some of them um, from outside and pay the extra, the buy-in price, uh, provided, of course, it doesn't tell us here how much we're selling uh, these products for. I am going to assume that all the products can be sold at a much higher price. It doesn't matter what the figure is, let's assume we could sell them, all of them, at $25 a unit. Then, of course, we're going to make a profit whether we make it or whether we buy in the units. We prefer to make it ourselves or make even more profit because the uh, cost is lower. But we can't make them all ourselves. We've not got enough kilos. Well, we've got to decide. We have 8,000 kilos, so we can make some ourselves. Uh, but which, which should we make ourselves? Should we make X's ourselves and buy in Y and Z? Or should we make... Zeds ourselves and perhaps a bit of Y, whatever. What's the best way of using the 8,000 kilos that we've got? And what should we make ourselves? Whatever's left, we'll have to buy in. And to make the most profit, we have to do effectively what's the least cost. And this is where we use um, effectively our key factor approach, limiting factor approach from earlier. With X, Y, and Z. Why do we prefer to make ourselves? Because it costs less. And so what's the saving per unit? If we make ourselves. Uh, 
Well, X, we'd only be paying $10, buying outside would be 13. So if we make X ourselves, we save $3 a unit. If we make Y ourselves, 12 is against 17, we save $5 a unit. If we make Z ourselves, $2 a unit, 16 minus 14. Uh, and given we want to do it the cheapest way we can, it looks at first glance as though, well, oh, is the one we should make ourselves? It saves us $5, or if you prefer, it costs us an extra $5 if we don't make it ourselves. Uh, but of course, it's material that's the problem, this material B, and these units use different quantities. Uh, how many kilos of material? X uh, uses three kilos, Y uses two kilos per unit, Z uses one kilo. And so we want to use the material we have in the way that gives us the biggest saving per kilo. So what's the saving per kilo? Well, any material we use making X, it saves us three dollars for every three kilos. We save a dollar per kilo. How much do we save if we use the material to make Y? We save five dollars a unit. It takes two kilos, so it's two dollar fifty a kilo. And finally, how much do we save if we use the material to make Z? Two dollars one kilo, two dollars a kilo. Well, we, we want to use the material available in whichever way makes the biggest saving. And so, Y is the best one to make ourselves at $2.50. Z is second best at $2. X is third best at $1. And so, now let's do it. Um, y was best, so make ourselves uh, we'll make as many Y's as we can well of course there's no point in making more than demand because that's the most we could sell so we'll make two and a half thousand units of Y but I'd better check obviously we do have enough material to make two and a half thousand units uh, the material two kilos a unit, so 5,000. So no problem there, we have enough material to make Y in full. And we've got more left, how much have we got left? Remember there's 8,000 in total. And so we've still 3,000 left, what am I doing? The balance. And so what should we do with the 3,000? We'll go to the one that's next biggest saving, the next best, which was Z. And so Z, uh, the demand is 4,000 units. But I can see straight away we can't possibly make ourselves 4,000 units. It would need a kilo each, it would need 4,000 kilos, we've only got 3,000. So we'll make as many Zs as we can. It's a kilo per unit. And therefore, we'll make 3,000 Zs. So that's all we'll make ourselves. Anything else we'll buy in. And so what will we buy in? Buy from outside. Or from others. Well, we're not going to buy any more Ys because we're already producing as many as we can sell. Uh, Z, uh, we could sell 4,000 and we're only producing ourselves 3,000. So Z, we'd have to buy in the other 1,000 units. And finally, of course, uh, our, our, our X. Uh, X, we're not making any X's ourselves. Uh, and so we'd have to buy in all 2,000 units of X. And there we are. So that's what we're after. That's the best way of dealing with it. Uh, can I repeat one thing I said earlier, and then nobody watching is at all worried? I have assumed 
that all three products can be sold for more than both our cost of making them and the cost of buying them in. I'm sorry repeating, which is quite important here, that if, if I assume, for example, that they could all be sold at $25 a unit, then clearly whether I'm buying it or making myself, we're going to make profit on all of them, so we will do it. If it were the case that, oh, X, um, we said it's better to buy from others, but if X could only be sold for $12, then of course you're not going to pay 13 and then sell it for 12 We just wouldn't do any X. But that's not really what the problem is here. It's simply that if we assume we are going to sell them all to meet demand, which is the most efficient way of dealing with it, they can't sell them, so I'll buy in, and I hope that's clear. All right, so that's everything in chapter nine. Um, but as always, and it says it on the last page, do make sure you have a go at the online practice test. And if any of the uh, answers aren't clear, do ask in the Institute.